Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can access the Microsoft SQL Server log file. It's similar to Windows Event Viewer but uh, targeted towards uh, SQL Server. It's a handy tool. It's a very handy tool actually to uh, allow you to actually see what's going on with the SQL Server alongside with other uh, tools and with Windows Event Viewer. Let's get started. So you're going to have to launch a SQL Server Management Studio which I've already done here. So I'm going to go in here. Once you launch your SQL Studio Server, they will prompt you to log in with this credential. Uh, if you don't have a SQL uh, Server Studio, you can actually download it. Uh, it's online from Microsoft. And once you download it, you can go to Start and then go uh, look at uh, Microsoft. And then this is how you launch it, right? When you click on it, this will be what, what you, you will see normally. So once that's done, you uh, depending on your authentication type, you select the authentication. I'm going to authenticate using a window authentication and hit connect. And if your database is running and all that stuff, uh, you'll come up with this window. If the database is not running, you can actually start the database by going to Microsoft here again, to the main database, go to configuration manager here and make sure that your SQL server is running. Once that all, that's all good and dandy, go back in here. Now to look at the log file, you're going to have to expand the management tree and then go to SQL server logs. And you can see a lot of, I have a lot of archive logs and this is the current log. Just double click the current log here to open up a window. I'm just going to expand this to a large screen so they can see more. You can either select all the logs by double clicking on this checkbox here. It shows you everything that happens on your SQL server. It doesn't, this doesn't cover a window portion of it. So if you have a SQL server agent, you click on this guy here. The SQL server agent is actually a tool actually uh, that allows you to schedule um, things, uh, rather a task that can be executed uh, on a regular basis. In, in Microsoft Windows, or rather SQL Server Agent, they call it jobs, right? Essentially, it is a, a stored job information that contains um, information that you can actually schedule it and run it, maybe to back up your database, you know, uh, or maybe to purge your database, that can all be scheduled. So if there's any problem with your, uh, any problem or any activities on your SQL Server Agent, it will be reflected in here. Next one is the database mail. Database mail is uh, no different than any other database, uh, but it's uh, sorry, a mail server, but it's uh, a mail generated by SQL Server. I've not used a database mail server to many extents, so I wouldn't be able to tell. And this database, as you can see, there's, there's nothing uh, in there because I, I, didn't, I don't use database mail server, nor the SQL Server agent there. So let's go back to this guy here and look at this uh, database here. So it tells you a lot of things about the database, date stamp time, uh, date timestamp, can't talk today. Uh, and after that, you can also export it. You know, you can load the file, you can refresh it. You can apply filter too. There's many, many filters you can apply. And you can do search and all that good stuff. Um, you can also merge. Let's, let's do this. Let's disable this and look at the NT window. So NT windows, they have the same size setup. You got date time and the message. So I want to uh, focus a bit on this one here. Um, here they said uh, bucket, fail bucket, and you got a couple of app crash. And if you look at it further towards the right, P1 pertains to process name. This is uh, MFEAVSVC. It's actually a McAfee server that's crashing. I'm not too sure why. I need to take a look at it a bit further. P2 is actually a process version, which is the version of the McAfee. And P3 here means uh, processor timestamp and when this, this uh, crash happened there. P4 is your module name, which is uh, actually the executable, I guess. And then um, P5, is your, P5 is your version of the module. And then uh, P7 would be your exception code. So this is what you'll be using to do a search uh, rather than typing all this up. P8 is the exception offset from the start module. Um, I don't know exactly what this means, but uh, if you look at the manual, uh, this is written as exception offset start module. And 9 and 10 generally is blank. They are not used. It's uh, user defined or auxiliary. With that being said, right, so you can see uh, there's a few things going on in here. So Windows NT. So from the perspective of uh, diagnosing what's wrong with the SQL server, I normally join this and this together. 
so that you get a good uh, cocktail of uh, SQL Server and the Windows alarm message, right? For example, uh, I had stopped the server uh, sometime in, uh, if you stop the server, you'll see message like this. Uh, let me find it here. Right here. So when I stop the server, this is what the uh, stop server message looks like. You know, it says unexpectedly. The reason behind that is that I stopped the server and this is what happens. And of course, if there's any other client that's connected to it, uh, will be disconnected first before the SQL servers get stopped. And that I stopped using the configuration manager that I showed you previously. So anyway, it's got, uh, when you restart the server, it will show over here too as well. Right here, when I restarted the server, this is what the restarting line looks like. So anyway, so yeah, it's a pretty good tool to have. I use this extensively and I hope you will adopt this tool as well. Uh, Windows Event Viewer is great, but uh, it's a bit difficult to find certain things. But this tool is actually tailored for SQL Server database and di diagnosing it. Anyway, if this tool helps you or if these tips helps you, do give me a thumbs up and like, subscribe as well. Other than that, have a good day. Bye.